cases in the field, some basic cases in the field, of civil companionship. There are other options which are not covering as of now, so this will be covered in the advanced part of this course. And even the scripting also, I'll be taking uh, a little bit deeper and other options which we have, uh, you know, with respect to TPT. Uh, so that will be covered in another advanced course on TPT. So uh, with uh, today's final session will be on the requirement, uh, traceability and management. And we will do something, uh, some miscellaneous settings I will just show, you know, on the importance of it. So with that, uh, this course will be done, and then uh, we will see and meet in the next course from now on. So the first thing about uh, you know, the TPT is so everything is packed here. So whatever the options you want, the requirement linking, you wanted to do anything with respect to the test cases, so everything is in one place. You just have to so start, uh, you know, filling the details and do the linking properly to start to work. So now for this particular test cases which we have created uh, till now, I have some requirements in my Excel document. So I wanted to import this and once I import this, I'll try to link it and then we'll generate a report. Then we will see how it comes to a uh, conclusion, how you know the report shows the traceability also. And then we'll have some test case details and then uh, we'll see how it will be shown there. So here, this is, uh, class so just a document name just for the reference and I'll say view next so it is asking whether I have an Excel or CSV or a source export so I have an Excel export on my desktop and uh, you can enter a manual version so if you have anything on your own but uh, if you don't want so TPT itself will maintain versions for this so every time you don't have to delete your existing requirements or anything like that when you just update it automatically it gets overwritten and it finds out which are requirements change which are not changed we'll, we'll see that as well so I will not check this and I click on next so now I have some data here yeah and then I click next so now it is asking which column should I create for requirement ID so requirement ID it is and which column is for the text so requirement text Neglect requirement type column, so I have something called as type here. So heading is a heading, and requirement is a requirement. So now it's ready to be imported. So it says total 24 new requirements have been imported, and we will be able to see those in the requirements tab. Now let's say the indicator that is our first test case. So I have a temporary indicator requirement and a you know, permanent indicator uh, requirement as well. So by looking at the test case, I'll start to link. So one and two are permanent activation. So what I have to do is, so wherever the left, so I'm testing both left and right indicators in the same test case. And I'm switching off as well. So when the third requirement is covered and even the fourth requirement is covered in the first test case itself. So what I have to do, I have to group, click everything in a single click and if you do this, it says create four links to this test case. Yes, that, that's it. All the four test case, uh, four requirements are linked to this particular test case. Same thing, we have off, right, left, off. So same four will be applicable here. Uh, even the right indicator temp is also involved here. I have these two as well. So in this way I have to link the rest of the things but uh, I guess uh, I hope you got the gist what I meant for. Yeah and this belongs to the vehicle speed and this belongs to the wiper. some indicators again so 
so apart from low beam and high beam we have all the uh, requirements are implemented in the test cases now let's run my 22 test cases in a single shot and see have everything executed here so let's generate the overview report now the overview report has a summary here it says five passed one failed and 16 inconclusive that means we haven't developed any assessment for this so let it be like that so what are the other things which we are interested to look into now is the requirements tab so now in the requirements tab will be visible once you start to link the requirements only okay and uh, here it shows uh, how many requirements are linked to each and every test case and if any one of the requirement fails uh, so any one of the test case fails the rest of the linked test cases will also fail so that will give a summary on how it is now as of now uh, everything here uh, you know uh, looks kind of uh, inconclusive so let me quickly change it to something else uh, let me add an assessment a script quickly and I will link it to all test cases and I will say this assessment dot set result dpt dot passed so I am intentionally passing all my test cases yeah or maybe I can also do a random wise check sometimes I forgot uh, the basic things on Python Let me quickly check uh, random. I think random will work here with the Python uh, but uh, anyway so intentionally I'm passing all the test cases let's run Again from the beginning so now I have to select uh, start instead of start selected so click on this say start to so meanwhile it executes let me quickly check for random so I know the function but I have a doubt whether it will work in dpt or not because we can't import extra libraries like random and all that. Uh, I doubt it will work. So now if we look at the requirements, now it says still there are some question marks. So the reason behind that is in the execution configuration, you have to go to the report settings. Now if you read each and every line carefully, you have a lot of options which you can override it. You have an option to override the logo, you can add some extra text, and also we can add some uh, test case statuses you can show, access like status you can show, show linked requirements column, Status summary, I'll add it. Show requirements comment, show document version, generate access like the result table. And set this as well. So now I don't want to execute every time because execution means my data will be sent to MATLAB, and from MATLAB, I will receive uh, the data. So it's kind of a time taking process. Now I haven't changed anything inside the test case, the test case remains the same. 
the one which I modified is the execution configuration as well as with some the assessment. So you just you have to do the assessment. For that you can disable the execute option and keep only the assess option here. And maybe you can increase number of cores for a faster execution. Now when you run, this will not check your MATLAB. It will not send data to your MATLAB. Okay, your MATLAB will not execute, but it will just use an existing TPT bin related data. So uh, previously when you have executed the test case, the test case uh, data will be stored in a format called TPT bin and that will be stored in a uh, temporary location. I will show you that, how it is shown. Once that is available, you just you can draw, do the assess part. Okay, so and it will be very quick. So now if you see the requirements, now you will see even if one test case fails, the entire requirement fails. Yeah, so somehow somewhere there are few. So here all the test cases are passed to this particular requirement. So this requirement is completely tested. So on and so forth. So there are there will be some hyperlinks which you can directly see, and also it will give uh, information how many are not covered. So totally four requirements. I haven't created any test cases so far. So this will be the uh, report after that and this is a status summary one which will show what is the status of it. Uh, so usually whenever uh, we do a test case uh, review we will change the status. Change, uh, yeah, change status and we will set it to, to be reviewed and say assigning to this person. So that person will do the review And that person will do the review and again he will change the status to be stable. Okay. X person checked. So now all the test cases are stable. Now when I run this again, so just assess not the execute part. See it's a matter of seconds. Now you can see uh, the review date. So when it has been changed into a stable state and who is the person name and what is the comment he has provided. So this also has a review documentation inside. Yes, and post that you have our information which we already covered. Yeah, which we already covered. So this is about the reports. Now apart from reports, uh, I'll execute, uh, keep the execute ready. And when you keep the execute ready, make sure you keep the code to one because uh, if you forgot to change it to one, okay, and you try to run a multiple test cases, your TPT will try to open 16 MATLABs. So you should be careful with that. And so this is the directory where it stores the reports, and this is the directory where it stores the TPT bin. So now I will show you what the TPT bin um, actually is. Documents, here we have something. Yeah. Uh, okay, we have the TPT file here. This is a report section of the TPT. You can see all the overview report and the platform wise report. Yes. And then we have something called as test data. Here, each and every test case has a TPT bin. And each and every TPT bin has all your data inputs, outputs, local uh, variables, assessment variables, parameters, everything. And uh, using this data, so TPT will do an assessment. Okay, when you do only assess. So, yeah, you can see here how it is stored. Same way we can see it for each and every test case, you will find it for all. Yeah. So this is something which you have to remember for and attributes so if you have to change anything in the report so this is where the attributes will be. Storage so the reference directory so we were actually discussing about this at an earlier point when the signal comparison came into picture. When you select reference directory 
there will be group of files which it will be looking for uh, which is a tpt bin file format so this is where you have to browse once you browse the location where the tpt bin files are available for each and every test case uh, it will start to detect this and then it can automatically assign okay uh, and do a check so now the left side uh, is my actual model output and the right side i can simply say yeah, the same name but this is from a reference directory not from a current test run data but from a reference directory now my reference name will be taken from the directory which you will be setting the path here the storage okay so if you select or uh, use a current test data, uh, data that means it will try to loop the same data between the variable and the reference so the output of the model will be the same as the reference uh, signal so this you have to uh, look out for and if you want to compress the reports automatically so there's the mail so you can do this uh, so report section we already have seen it uh, script section so you can explore if you wanted to do some your own scripting activity of uh, creating a report so this is where you have to explore so now with this i have given a overall gist so this is a uh, intermediate level of information which i have provided but still there are a lot of other uh, par parts of uh, tpt which i haven't covered so for example i haven't gone deeper into the other options of uh, you know uh, signal comparison block and in assessments we have a lot of other options like trigger rule min max comparison you know, condition trees so forth and so on and uh, i haven't gone deeper into the script part because i don't want to confuse you in the initial days where you start with the python and you know, it feels very complicated with the maths but uh, it's a kind of a gist what i'm trying to show you now here uh, but it will be much more simpler and easier uh, see uh, there will be some other person who might come up and say okay i can write a script better so sure uh, there is always a better way even now i can show you a simple method now so tpt itself has an option which will provide tpt dot always yeah or asset always check always so you just you have to provide uh, the signal name and you can say uh, what is the value it has to be and it can print the respective data yeah and always means it will check for always uh, all the time samples and it will see if something is changed and then it will be uh, failed and then uh, else it will be passed so so something like this we have uh, some inbuilt options but out of all these options i have already shown you the best out of it so that is my tpt dot signal comparison thing here so if you understand how this functionality works and how an expected signal is being built then obviously this is a very easy walk around the path now i don't have to recap everything i'm sure you have the information for that uh, so there are other options which i not intend to cover now so let's say you wanted to export the test cases data so uh, have for all these cases and quickly add some backup data Just to fill the places I have been missing. Let's run this again.
the things which you have typed if, if you want to include that uh, make sure you select this option for let's say you have some you have a model and you are not able to cover uh, your uh, coverage for more than 90 percent or 90 percent say and it requires a lot of change of you know, dynamic values of data so sometimes TASMO does a little bit better but it's hard to find out based on which requirement the activations are happening but uh, you should make sure uh, you know you are TASMO generates test cases, but you will have to analyze each and every generated test case and find out based on which condition things have changed. So now it is able to find uh, acceleration, high beam function, indicator function, high beam function. So these are the subsystems of that which are And it is able to find different kinds of logic which uh, you know, it is ready to uh, generate test cases. So now I have to set some goals and say, okay, uh, what is the mode of coverage? So there are 132 condition coverage, 121 NCDC coverage, and 80 decision coverage. Totally all criteria is 333 out of 333. And I want everything to be covered. And, okay. And I have to make sure uh, each of these signals. So now we have some input signals here. This sequence I have view okay, how the kind of data I can view. So I can say um, the linear linear so uh, flows and like that I can test on science uh, acceleration can also be linear. I have to view what is the characteristic of the signal which can accept the inputs. Once you are done, you have to set up. Uh, we already have those here. Start analyzing the model, start compiling it. Now, this will take some time. So, now we can see uh, how the MCDC uh, is actually being built.
modification of the frame value of this one. So, so, so at this thing, this thing we have this ready. Let's do a panel check here. So test frame which is compatible with the task box. At the time of initial generation we have not selected the check box. Now it is covered. Last try but uh, if not